Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. Welcome to my review for Machin Sentai Kara Major episode 28. This is the first part of our debut story for the new mecha of the series, Grateful Phoenix. And I just want to say right off the bat something that I've said a lot about Kara Major throughout its run during reviews, but I really, really appreciate its pacing when it comes to debuts. Nothing's ever felt rushed. They always give it plenty of time, which I guess is what not rush means, but you know, it makes it feel special, it gives it often meaning, and it just feels so much more natural and it makes it more exciting when new things debut, especially when, you know, you've had series in the past in general, both in Sentai and Rider, that have debuted things quickly, but it's especially apparent with Saber now where they're like, here's everything and a bunch of things and some unnecessary hats, and it all feels so meaningless, and I know they need to sync it up with the, you know, toy release schedule, but that's the problem. I could do a whole video just ranting on about stupid practice. But regardless, I just wanted to draw attention to, I appreciate Kara Major's willingness for pacing. And like this episode debuted the first part, like literally the first part of the mecha, and it ended kind of on a cliffhanger, and we see from the preview it's gonna be next week happening. So, when we start off the episode, Jeru is meeting uh, the King Odin guy in the, like, Harry Potter dimension from the end of Deathly Hallows, and he's kind of telling him, like, I'm to meet at this place, and when he wakes up, he gets the key, and when he wakes up, they all start, like, crying over reminiscing about it, and it seems like Shiguru is also crying, but he's just practicing lines, which I thought was a funny moment and very classic him, but also is going to tie into something later, which kind of worked out funny. But then there's, you know, not a lot of time to handle this because there's an attack happening, a big attack on the city, and apparently it looks similar to what happened to Crystallia long ago. And when they go to fight it, they stand no chance against it because not only is it powerful, but it's invisible. It literally, like, knocks the color out of the Kara Major Mecha, and they're, like, reeling from it, and they're losing their energy, and they're like, well, how do we fix you? And they said, well, there is this one place, but the only person that really knew how to get there was the mentor of the king, which was Embark, and, you know... Relatable. His mentor is a rectangle. Talk about how he actually has been on Earth because he's in a depression because what happened is that he was visiting Earth when Crystallia was destroyed, so he feels guilty for not being there when Crystallia and Odin were attacked. Is his name Odin? I'm just gonna keep calling him that regardless. Anyway, but he feels guilty, so he's kind of shut himself off from the world, and so Shiguru and Juru go, Sh Shiguru, anyway, they go off to go cheer him up and recruit him, and I, what I like too is while they were doing this, the other rangers didn't just sit there and be like, well, our only hope is on these guys, they're actually trying to figure out other ways to handle the situation, which I appreciated, and they kind of come to the conclusion that it's not really invisibility, it's cloaking, and there's a funny scene where he's like, you know, cloaking himself on the white background with paper, and they're like, well, we can basically see you, but we get your point of what this is. And that was pretty funny. But they basically discover that, and they realize that the tablet that she has, the the new villain lady, whose name I don't remember right now, uh, but that she has, it might tell them where it is. And so there's like a fun fight scene where they're kind of playing like a game of keep away with the, the putties, and, or the muddies or whatever, and that was just kind of a fun fight scene. It was kind of unique to see, because not only did they have a specific purpose, but it made it more of like a, it's just a fun scene, like outside of the normal type of fight scene we usually get. So that's what they were doing while they were on the island. And then on the island, they're trying to cheer him up and bring back his emotions initially with a fake comedy routine and all this other funny stuff and a song and you know, it was hit and miss, but it was it was pretty amusing. And then it comes down to Shiguru starting to cry and like empathizing with him, which finally brings out his emotions. And I was kind of curious, I'm like, okay, they can take it one of two ways. Either they're tying it back to the beginning of the episode where now he actually is crying because, because he's empathizing with him, or he's acting again. And he did turn out to be acting again, which I thought was funny. It was very in character. I think it was a really endearing moment, nice character moment for both him and Jiru, and it was funny. And I like what, what uh, Jiru said to him where he said, even though, you know, it was fake, you're fake news. Sad. Even though it was fake crying or acting, it was real because what you were trying to do was good and it helped him. And I liked that because I feel it's one of those times where Power Rangers, I know this isn't Power Rangers, but Power Rangers has been so cut and dry with its lessons lately that when I hear a lesson like that that is kind of in a gray area, it's like he manipulated him but was for a good reason. Even using the word manipulate sounds too far, but I think you know what I'm getting at. And I feel like if this was a Beast Morphers episode, they'd be like, you could never do that, that was so bad, I can't believe you lied to him, you're going to hell. So I liked that 
because I think there's gray areas, like white lies, basically. It was kind of a mini tangent, but it couldn't, I couldn't help but think about, like, how would Power Rangers handle this? I don't mean overall, I just mean the current regime Power Rangers. But anyway, they get him agree to come back and help, and he does when the Rangers are now fighting. They, they do manage to decloak it, and it's this big dragon monster that was one of the ones that attacked Crystallia, and all they have left is Giga and Driller and Zabune, and they're, you know, losing the fight. But then the uh, Embark rushes in, and he's the gold half of the Mecha, and he, not saves the day yet, but, you know, he stops the monster in his tracks, and he transforms into himself, and then the episode ends there outside of a little song number that they do afterwards. But it kind of ends off there, and like I said, we know we're getting grateful next week. But I thought it was another solid Kara Major episode. I liked, again, the pacing, so we have the storyline about how this Mecha's happening. We're debuting it one at a time. I like the stuff with Juru and Shiguru on the island, because it both had some funny stuff and some nice character moments like I talked about. And like I said, I also like that the other rangers were being proactive about it. Like, they weren't just hinging all their hopes on this quest. You know, because a lot of times in plots like this, uh, whether it be in PR, Sentai, or Rider, they would have a character or characters going off on a quest like they are, and then all the other rangers would be doing would be playing defense and protecting the city and trying to hold them back until the, the cavalry arrives. But in this case, they were actually trying to be helpful, and I really liked that. And I thought it was a nice lead into next week in the Mecca, and also building up that meeting between Juru and uh, the King. So I thought I would give it an 8, another solid episode. I'm still loving me some Kara Major. But what did you guys think of this episode? Let me know in the comments as always. Until next time, if you like, comment, subscribe, and comment steps, and ring that bell so you can just for my videos. Dawson Rider, signing out.